Hey David, Bruce here with an episode of Breaking Chords, and this is Nuno Betancourt style arpeggios. And definitely, you know, Nuno Betancourt became popular and famous playing with the band Extreme, you know, back in the 80s and early 90s. And, uh, you know, he's reunited with the group and they've done some kind of reunion tours and appearances. But uh, it's interesting that Nuno hit the scene, you know, technically in the late 80s, and people still talk about his music and his guitar playing today like it's a new thing, but it's been around for decades, you know. And uh, that just kind of tells you, you know, the great music never fades, it never disappears or goes away. You know, people hold on to it and they talk about it and they get excited and thrilled uh, when they hear their favorite musicians, you know, play an instrument or, you know, play a song. And, uh, you know, Nuno's phenomenal, you know, monstrous guitar player. And I have talked about him in other, uh, you know, three for all lessons and some other material here on Late Night Lessons. And I'll, I'll talk about Nuno more in the future, too. I plan on doing, you know, like a chord play episode because his rhythm work is so interesting. Um, so he's a very, you know, exciting and kind of diverse, you know, guitarist to tap into. And the licks in this lesson technically come from an old Guitar World magazine, you know, back in the early 90s. And there was a lesson with Nuno in that old Guitar World. And there were some ideas and some things that he kind of fleshed out and explained that really opened my eyes. And I've used these ideas with students over the years, and here I am, you know, kind of regurgitating and sharing this information again on this video. But there's a lot you can learn from, you know, players like Nuno Betancourt, you know, of course, people like Steve Vai and, you know, Paul Gilbert and, and Joe Satriani and some of these people. Um, and Nuno's no exception, you know, he definitely has his own kind of signature approach and sound and style and delivery, you know, when he plays the guitar. So, uh, here we go. The first thing we're going to uncover and kind of borrow from that old uh, guitar world lesson with Nuno is this A minor arpeggio that's right here, you know, kind of based around the 12th position. And this is definitely kind of an Ingve arpeggio. Ingve plays this one all the time. And it's a very common, you know, sweep arpeggio. So you can play it like this. You know, and there I was kind of alternate picking through it, or you could also sweep that too. You know, and just kind of use one motion or one direction with your picking hand. So there I just basically kind of raked through those, you know, with a downstroke or a downstroke sweep. But uh, what Nuno did is instead of playing that as kind of a traditional arpeggio, like Yngwie, um, he actually incorporated string skipping. So, you know, we recently talked about this in the previous episode of Breaking Chords, you know, the string skipping arpeggio lesson. And um, here we are doing it with Nuno, you know. So we're going to relocate the C note here on the 13th fret on the B to the 17th fret on the G. So we're just going to change one note, but that's going to radically change the shape. So in the lesson, uh, the fingering for this was indicated like this, you know, with the index and pinky finger. Um, and that's a little, you know, crazy. I mean, I can definitely play it that way. But I kind of prefer to use my middle finger there on 14 on the G, you know, pinky on 17, index on the 12th fret, high E, and then pinky on the 17th on the high E. So I, I prefer to use my middle finger in there too, like this. And you can hear it's the same notes, right? played a different way. You know, we just rearranged the spelling of those notes. So right there, there's kind of a comfortable, you know, A minor string skipped arpeggio. And you could, you know, finger that Nuno's way, you know, index and pinky. And when you do it that way, it almost kind of feels like your hand kind of fans out, you know, to get that stretch. So I think that's kind of why I prefer to use my middle finger, so I can just kind of maintain the same shape, you know, and position with my hand, and I don't have to move like that, right? Now, uh, the next step here, after we found A minor, uh, in the lesson it kind of shifts to E major. So we're going to find an E major arpeggio right here. <laughs> There's your G-sharp, B, E, and G-sharp there. But instead of playing it that way, we're going to relocate this B note uh, there to the 16th fret on the G string. So you could play it Nuno's way, you know, with the index and pinky. 
<laughs> or you could maintain that same fingering that I used with the first shape and just move that uh, middle finger and pinky down like this. You know, so there's A minor. And then E major. Now also in the lesson, uh, he uncovered uh, F diminished uh, 7. And, you know, the traditional shape would look like this. You know, which is a little weird, because there you've got this little, you know, kind of, you know, diminished triad right there, and then you're, you're reaching up with your pinky to grab that F note. So that is kind of an unusual arpeggio fingering, you know, the traditional shape. You know, your pinky's kind of reaching up and grabbing that F there on the 13th fret. But to string skip that, let's just basically grab this A flat on the 13th fret on the G string, like this. You know, it's much easier and, and smoother, you know, to play it that way. Instead of this way. You know, it's just kind of a different, you know, variation. But right there we've got, you know, A minor. You know, E major. And also F diminished 7. Okay, so in the Guitar World lesson, you know, then after Nuno kind of broke down those arpeggio shapes, uh, he shared this kind of extended, you know, arpeggio workout. And it's similar to uh, the Mother Don't Want to Go to School Today, you know, guitar solo. There's this kind of erratic, you know, diminished arpeggio string skip uh, section in that solo. And uh, in the, the magazine, you know, lesson, he starts with A minor right here. <laughs> And then you're going to move down to E major, right here. And then you're going to do the exact same thing down a whole step. So now we're going to start on G minor, which is going to start here on the 12th fret on the G. It's the same fingering and shape we had for A minor, it's just down a whole step. And then that's going to move uh, to D major, which is going to be right here. So there we've got this little, you know, kind of sequence of chords, you know, A minor to E major, um, you know, G minor to D major, and it looks like this. And it's also interesting that it stops, or the sequence, you know, stops with the pinky. So that might be a little uncomfortable at first, or initially, but, you know, with practice you can get used to that. So once again... And then right there, he's going to change to F diminished 7. And then he basically, you know, starts cruising down, you know, Ingve's Highway. And we're going to move that down, you know, three frets at a time. And we're going to race it back up, you know, three frets at a time, too. And it looks and sounds like this. Now, in the lesson, he actually ended it with an A power chord way up here. I added a little variation there at the end. You know, Nuno kind of ended with that A power chord, you know, up here. But I technically borrowed the slide movement that I uncovered in the Bruce Bouillet, you know, free-for-all lesson I recently did with his Racer X solo. And I kind of borrowed that octave slide that he did and finished, you know, Nuno's idea like this. And there I'm just basically, you know, grabbing that A flat, sliding to A natural, and then grabbing A natural an octave higher, like this. <laughs> So you can end that however you want, but I just decided to kind of, you know, steal an idea from somewhere else and stick it, you know, in this lesson. So that's a good lesson to learn, you know, like anytime you learn like an interesting like little bending move or a slide lick or just a little nugget of something, you know, grab it, you know, and keep it, you know, in your repertoire and your bag of tricks and then you can stick that somewhere else. And who knows, you might make a, a cool variation or a, a new version, you know, and kind of give an old lick a new facelift. Um, so the whole lick uh, looks and sounds like this. Something like that. And I do like kind of applying like a slight palm mute. Uh, you know, you don't have to do that for the diminished section, but I think it sounds kind of aggressive and cool if you do that. <laughs> You know, you're almost kind of choking those notes a little bit. Um, you don't have to do it that way. All right, the last idea I'm going to share here uh, didn't come from that Guitar World lesson, but it is a Nuno Betancourt kind of staple or, you know, a trademark lick. 
And that is, you know, his string skip tapped arpeggios. And you can hear this in songs like He Man Woman Hater and Get the Funk Out. And I've had a lot of people ask about this, you know, because they hear it or they see it. And they're like, what is that? You know, so it's, it's tricky. Um, and it's definitely, you know, very eye-opening and kind of different. Um, so he's basically using, uh, it would technically be like an E major 9 arpeggio with the left hand. So the left hand is going to do this. And there you can see we're grabbing that E, there's the F sharp, and there's G sharp and B and E and G sharp. So there's a little pattern right there. It's almost like the Paul Gilbert major arpeggio that we've talked about before. But we're adding that F sharp right there. Okay, so that's the left hand. And then the right hand, which is going to be tapping, is basically mirroring uh, additional notes from E major. So there's, you know, you're tapping a B, there's tapping an E, and we're also going to tap a B up there on the 19th fret on the high E. So we're doing this 21, 21, 19 on the D, G, and high E strings. So it all kind of syncs up together. So we're technically playing an arpeggio with your left hand, and you're also tapping, you know, like fragments of an arpeggio with your right. So there's a ton of, you know, arpeggios happening at the same time, like this. And slowly, we're just doing this. And that's really interesting because that's E major. And if we move everything down a set of strings, it's going to change to B major. So that's going to be right here. So there we've got a little two chord progression, you know, E to, to B, like this. take that whole thing and move it down a whole step and we're basically mimicking what you'll hear Nuno do in He-Man Woman Hater. Um, so there was E. There's B. Move down a whole step and you've got D. And A major. It's really cool because you've got this little four chord progression and you're just outlining those chords uh, with arpeggios. All right, that's going to wrap up this look at Nuno Betancourt arpeggios. So please leave some feedback and comments. Let me know if you got anything from this, and I'll be back with more content, lessons, and material very soon. Thank you.